conversation, um, which is very timely indeed. Um, I'm really pleased that we have Solomon Madhu uh, joining us. Solomon is the VP for Data and Analytics at Renaissance Bank, and he's joining us to talk about his experience of moving to the cloud um, and how COVID-19 uh, has impacted thinking around cloud technologies. So just a reminder, you can submit your questions all the way through the presentation. You don't need to wait to the end. We had loads there, so I'm sure we will again submit them as you think of them. But I will now hand over to Solomon. Hi there, Solomon. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, um, yeah I think so. Just uh, <laughs> trying to get back, back on this uh, control panel, panel here. Not a problem, not a problem at all. Uh, all right. Just while Sol something right. up there. Oh, are you ready, Sol, I believe? <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. okay, let's go. All right. All right. Thank you all for joining this afternoon or morning, wherever you are. Um, thank you for your time this afternoon. I would like to share some information or things that have, that have you know, caused, caused significant challenge, challenge and opportunities in the uh, uh, services in this industry to the recent COVID or, or other, other things that form the code as well. well all the disruptions and the opportunities we see in this uh, process, we're going to evaluate how that's going to impact our technology world or data or, or things like that. That take advantage advantages of technologies is, is, is my intention to share. To share. So, as 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 we uh, entered into the COVID in the beginning of, of this year, uh, we, we saw different impacts from finance for financial institutions, uh, broadly uh, classified here. And the consumer lending area, where we have in, have increased financial distress for consumers, and uh, consumers you must have to get, um, you know, they're, they're trying to apply more loans based on don't know whether there is going to be a, a bridge loan for a brief moment of time or going to be a, a long term loan, uh, which I don't know consumers would be able to repay back. Would there be a risk? So all that challenges about uh, risk assessment, understanding about the financial needs of the customer, growing needs of the customers. Uh, so that's that's one challenge. Challenge. We already see, seen a uh, branch bank banking perspective. Active where even before COVID, we we, see, we saw decline in brick and mortar transactions also over the time. A new millennials um, probably declining, uh, decreasing to go to bank to do their day to day transactions. Uh, they're they're more mobile, uh, you know, online banking. And we saw the trends over the year. The year now, even even after the now nobody, you know, you know willing to. Have, Physical action that that causing uh, more, even more, more less transactions. On the debit and credit cards, um, you know, people are opting for less physical interactions. Obviously, uh, you know, whenever you see the keypad, uh, you don't want to touch the keypad. You want to make sure the keypad is is wiped. You touched it, it, and your hands have to have to touch it. Uh, any, uh, anyway, you go to a grocery store. Uh, sometimes I'm a personal store story. Uh, you know, there there are sometimes you go to the grocery store to enter the pin number for your uh, you know rewards and things like that. Uh, nowadays, I don't even care for the rewards anymore, taking the risk of punching those numbers. Uh, so there's there's a need for cash cashless and frictionless less uh, payment systems. Uh, which means, uh, um, now um, you know you know people are out for uh, less um, less less touch points. Uh, this you know ATMs or facial recognition things like that. So people don't have to physically punch those numbers. And on the ATM cash replenishments, you see increasing withdrawals. Um, uh, uh, don't want to make, make multiples to ATM, ATMs because uh, reduce the number, the number of uh, attractions on the ATM, ATMs, uh, just like I do. So go for a, a larger amount of cash that would be you for a couple of weeks instead of going every, every day, as supposed to be previously. We only go to the ATMs, we need a $20 bill, take one twenty and use it and go back. Now I want to reduce the number of transactions since reducing the risk of, risk of touching ATMs. Also, as, as um, in withdrawals are, are happening more frequently, uh, you have a need for sanitizing, sanitizing the cash bills, as, as, as the recycled cash bills. You know, based on the 
we, we heard several stories about COVID living in plastic for so many days, paper for so many days, and uh, you're always skipping about handling those bills and thinking about, hey, this, hey, this does it mean? Sorry to uh, cut you off there, Solomon. Uh, we seem to be having a few technical issues. We're getting a bit of a an echo on, on your line. So if you wouldn't mind um, just refreshing your your presentation page and the control, the browser page that's got the um, slide controls on there. If you just refresh that and join in, um, then we will uh, hopefully be able to fix that for you. Apologies to the audience here. Um, we're just going to try and fix that uh, echo that I believe you'll be getting down the line. The line. Is it better better than now? James, I'm, I'm already back. Ah, so I think with, did you do a did you do a refresh of the page there, Solomon? I did. I did. It might be feeding back from. Uh, are you using headphones at all, or are you um, listening through the uh, through speaker? Uh, listening through through speaker. Uh, okay. Um, if you could just turn that speaker down, um, and we will be able. You'll, that should hopefully cancel out the echo, um, and we'll just use the team chat to communicate with you there. Is it better better than now? I was still getting a bit of an echo there. If you could just try again, just turn that speaker all the way down, um, and we'll be able to communicate through the team chat. Okay, I can put on the phones if you want, want me to. Do you want me to try, me to try that? Uh, yeah, if you could, that would be great. Thank you. If you could use the headset. What about that? Not a problem. Not a problem. Technology always always works fine on the dry run, and then as soon as you come live, and um, we, we always <laughs> get let down by technology at the last minute. It's the way. It's subtle, I know. Um, but hopefully the headset will be able to fix things for you there. You may need to, to refresh um, just to, if you go into the um, control panel and then on the choose connection type, where your mic is, you might just need to change that to, to the headset mic rather than your computer mic as well. Is it better now? That sounds a lot better. I'll, I, uh, I'll let you get back to the presentation, Solomon. All right. Uh, sorry about the disruption here. So, well, I was uh, talking about, about the ATM replenishments. So you want to reduce the number of uh, you know interactions with them, and as as people who want to use use it more often, I, I mean uh, recycling more often, you want to make sure that the the bill sanitized. So that's that's one of the challenges uh, during this time we face. So there's a poll question here. I'm very sorry, Solomon. We seem to be having that issue again. And um, would you mind connecting uh, by the dial-in option rather than the webcam? It will mean that, unfortunately, we'll lose the video, um, but hopefully that should um, improve the audio quality um, so that we're, we're able to continue with the presentation. OK. You want me, you want me to restart? Uh, yeah, if you could, if you go. Let me restart it. While um, Solomon is sorting out the, the technical issue that we're having there. Um, we do have the poll live on um, on your screens now. So the, the poll that Solomon was going to ask you there was, uh, what level of disruption did your business experience during COVID? Hopefully a little less than the, the technology disruption we're having right now, but the, the question there again, what level of disruption did your business experience during, during COVID? Was it low, medium, or high? Those three easy options for you there. So let us know whether you experienced a low amount of disruption, a, a medium amount of disruption, or a high amount of disruption during um, the COVID epidemic pandemic. And while you're voting there, we are just working um, with Solomon to try and get him dialed in uh, by a phone. So we may lose his webcam, um, but you'll actually be able to hear him. We'll be able to continue with the slides, and we'll be able to share Solomon's experience and his work in this area as well. Apologies once again for these uh, technical issues that we are having. We're just reconnecting uh, via a dial-in system, which hopefully should eliminate the problem, as I say. So do please bear with us. Um, vote on that poll while we're sorting that out for, for you all.
hopefully it shouldn't be too much longer now. And I believe it may be We are just going to leave that poll open just for a little while longer. So if you haven't already voted on that poll, please do. Yes, I'm back. And we have Solomon back as well. So there we go. Apologies again for that, everybody. Um, well, I've been running the poll um, while you were dialing back in, Solomon. Um, so I think we can probably advance to the, the results page there. And I'll hand back to Solomon. All right. So we got the results here. Um, so you see. Uh, surprisingly, uh, you know, majority of the people had very low impact uh, based on which, you know, which type of industry you're working in, a type of uh, business you're, you're in. Looks like the audience have less than, you know, 70% low impact, high impact is only 6%. That's interesting. So let's go back to um, this, uh, you know, look at the physical versus uh, digital interactions, what customers are preferring uh, just, just based on survey. You see a, a more and more and more increasing need for uh, physical, uh, you know, versus digital interactions. A lot of people opting for they want mobile features to book apartments online. You know, they want to, uh, you know, take care of uh, the, the furniture or things like that. Uh, increasing uh, need for uh, sanitization or and uh, you look at plexiglass. Now you see a lot of plexiglass all around um, places you go check out. And uh, virtual meetings, of course, this, that's the reason why we are in this virtual environment that's supposed to be in a, in a conference. And, um, you know, ATM with uh, facial recognition instead of punching those numbers. Uh, we just talked about that in the previous slide. And uh, heat sensing devices to identify potentially ill staff or customers. That's, that's one of the needs that, uh, that uh, you know, understand if anybody is uh, under any kind of uh, symptoms of uh, this disease. So you look at the banks, uh, what the current survey of the banks, you see online banking obviously taking late. The banks with a full service digital presence are going to be uh, dominating this, this uh, time right now. People are already uh, in, who have a good backbone of digital or online banking, mobile banking, uh, they're already winning because people, have, uh, people want to do more and more uh, online transactions. You saw this online banking and the customer behaviors uh, and then you see a lot of lot more model and interactions going up and up during this time so which calls for a more if your if your institution is not already not into a, a more stable solid uh, digital presence now this is more than needed to go ahead in the direction which calls for a, a backbone stronger infrastructure uh, stronger service layer mobile applications so uh, strategic impacts, now look, let's look at the strategic impacts of this uh, disruption. You see resilience, uh, uh, the test for uh, various categories of uh, your disruptions of resilience, which is your climate change, uh, your pandemics, all these other disasters uh, pose a threat and uh, which, which, to, which uh, test your long-term fitness of your, of your business. The agility is the business industry events, uh, bankruptcy, seven days, uh, you know, failing bonds, things like that. The market conditions uh, will force organizations to become more agile, more adapt uh, to conditions which are pre presenting themselves. So the business needs to be in a position, position to change more rapidly. Uh, optimization is uh, reducing your IT investment, um, increasing time pressure on IT, um, consumer behavior, acceleration of automation will, uh, you know, drive focus on digital optimization. So. And uh, the transformation, of course, you are ready for new market opportunities, demand for new revenue streams, uh, changing definition of value, and other factors uh, for digital uh, transformations. Uh, business continuity. Uh, so we have we have several types of uh, you know uh, continuity plans in, in the past, uh, whether it's pandemic, whether it's uh, inclement weather, or uh, some kind of a business continuity plans. Now we'll have a a pandemic plan in place where we're going to be ready for this kind of disruptions in future. So as you look in the bottom pyramid, we're nice to have foundational resilience, 
versus, uh, you know, must have to nice to have a transformational pyramid where it's built on a, a you know, structure of resilience, agility, optimization and transformation. So adapting all, all we all know the, the remote workforce, uh, you know, things like that, what, what the, this style of working has changed now. Um, you know, there are systems that we have not tested for a long time where all of a sudden everybody is online uh, remotely and uh, all of a sudden your, your systems are not able to support them because you never tested for 80 to 100 percent people working remotely. Uh, so cloud systems uh, as opposed to uh, some physical systems where you need uh, physical people in place to do these jobs, day-to-day uh, -day functions, things like that are supposed to be a cloud environment where you can remotely manage them, operate them uh, as needed. Uh, so the, the flexible product engines, uh, which, which we're, we're talking about, uh, uh, the negative uh, you know, interest rates, which may, which may come into play, negative, negative uh, interest rates. Um, so, um, and then our systems are not ready to do those things uh, because our, 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 uh, we don't have a, a very available, what do you call, applications to support those needs coming up. So these are some of the things that are, you know, disruptions uh, during uh, this time. So let's look at the fitness of uh, different types of industry. Uh, uh, fitness, you saw three, three major uh, categories here, uh, which is uh, for the first one is, uh, which is, uh, you know, went through a major disruption in the past 36, minute, 36 months, and they have thrived during the disruption and, and they're much stronger. Uh, the second thing is um, untested areas, uh, the, the blue ones. And the green, the green ones have never been tested. So if you look at the aggregates, I think financial institutions or insurance companies are actually much more uh, compared to other, other industries. But there's a lot of untested areas, 57% uh, in financial services, where you, you have untested, you know, kind of places where uh, you don't know what the disruption will do to you. And that's what we're going through today. So even even in a pre-COVID situation where there's a lot of uh, you know need for a cloud push, where the drivers for cloud push because we saw increasing number of you know SaaS applications that are rising on the on the on the cloud and the need for more data processing, data services, API services, and then you also saw the data velocity. A lot of uh, you know you saw a variety of uh, data coming through different uh, different uh, ways uh, coming uh, coming through your uh, System, so you need need for a cloud environment, and uh, of course you want to be able to serve the data, uh, make make you, make the data available to every part of the organization, whether it's analytics or AI, or machine learning, things like that. Uh, democratization of data is, is pushing the uh, the need for a cloud environment, even before a, a pre pre COVID situation. So the top ten uh, top data analytics trends after we saw this uh, saw this COVID come into play. Uh, we, we saw more, you know, AI. We, yesterday was a great presentation about AI and in, industrializing the AI. We learned about how we can apply AI, not just a, you know, a matter of a lot of people want to do uh, these AI projects, but how do you industrialize and make use and uh, derive a revenue or value or ROI on these projects? That's one of the fascinating, um, you know, things. Always a, a million dollar question, right? So you need more faster, smarter, responsible AI. And the decline of the dashboard, uh, which is, you know, not traditional applications uh, or automated pre-scheduled or pre-prepared uh, dashboards, but the need for more uh, dynamic self-servicing uh, visual uh, interactions with business users where they can drag and drop and, and, and uh, make data analysis. And then you, you have a few other things here, uh, which are business impact, your transforming deployments. Uh, of course, the cloud is, is a big uh, for digital transformation, your cloud deployments, your your CI CD pipelines, you need all this for your transforming deployment. Of course, uh, uh, data analytics value, of course, has been more than our majority. You have seen a lot of data uh, need right now because you, all of a sudden uh, there is data. People want to understand who, how you can respond to markets, how you can understand what happened through this period. Uh, quickly do a lot of uh, uh, understand your data well, so this is increasing uh, data analytics value nowadays. Um, so it's a uh, you know, practical blockchain or, or relationships from uh, the foundation of data analytics value. So there is another uh, question here, poll question here.
All right, let's look at the results. Wow. So you, you see, um, you know, the cloud, uh, a 25% of 25% split. Um, so you see a zero to 25%, a lot of people are still venturing into cloud, especially in the financial services area. Um, and then you saw a 25 to 50% uh, are, are in the cloud. That's interesting. So let's look at the cloud migration market. Uh, so you look at the small to medium business market um, in the past, starting post 2010, you see a significant increase of well, cloud market for the small and medium business. And you look at the trends and look at 2020 or 2025. Um, so more and more small to medium businesses are starting off in the cloud or, or they're all migrating to the cloud. So that's the growing trend ever. So it's a, it's not a question of, you know, why you will go to, you know, it's just a matter of when, it's not how or, or why. So look at the cloud market projections um, for our total industry IT. I look at, uh, it's projected to be a, a $320 billion market by 2022. So you see the increasing uh, cloud infra infrastructure, uh, infrastructure service as a service. Uh, and uh, platform, applications, business processes, everything migrating to cloud. So this is going to be uh, a major shift in, in everybody's business. So cloud, I understand, you know, everybody wants to go to cloud or, or what are the benefits? Uh, you already know uh, cloud has enormous benefits and also produces new challenges. How do you reap those benefits and encounter this, uh, all those challenges? So but the, the very first thing for us as we went to cloud, uh, one thing is uh, a low cost of ownership, right? We're spending a lot less, less, much less money than what we're spending or on traditional on-prem systems uh, with, uh, you know, hardware costs, your SaaS based costs, your maintenance costs, your upgrade costs and things like that. And of course, it's easily upgraded. So you, you will have automatically the services, software as a service uh, providers are, are automatically upgrading the software behind the scenes. You're not disrupting your, your processes. You're not stopping anything. You're just uh, you're getting automatic upgrades. You're not paying anything more, just one, one fee as you use, right? Um, so this, um, uh, for example, last year we've been, we had, you know, maybe 50 to 60 SQL servers on the network. Uh, and 2008 uh, versions were discontinued. So we had to move to 2012, the end of this year, last year. So it took us about six to nine months to understand all the impacts and move to 2012. And then there'll be another migration shortly coming up when 2012 is discontinued. So kind of that, that creates a lot of pain, uh, maintenance, things like that as you go larger and larger. So they're always up. Uh, the 24 by seven availability, 99.9% .9 availability is what every cloud provider promises us. And that's, that's a fact. Uh, so it's, it's mostly available. Uh, productivity because you can connect um, in multiple multiple sources, multiple deliveries. Uh, you know, data storage. Uh, you have no uh, backup or recovery things like that uh, because everything is maintained. Uh, less maintenance costs. A DR replication is automatically in, you know in the part of the cloud. So, uh, uh, top in strategic technology trends in 2020. If you look at this. Uh, uh, distributed cloud, as you're venturing into cloud, I think what this, you know, the recommended way everybody wants to do is go into a distributed cloud environment where you're not logged in with one provider. You want to be with a multiple, multi-environment, whether it's a, it's a hybrid or a, or a public or, or edge computing. So you want to spread into a distributed cloud environment so you're not logged in to any one provider. Um, so. And uh, you see top, uh, top in trends like Empowered Edge or practical blockchain, AI security, they all depend on uh, distributed cloud architecture. Uh, so AI security is, uh, you know, just an automated security systems where you have a lot of, a lot of activity on the cloud. It's, it's very difficult to uh, monitor that security manually. Uh, so you have AI processes taking care of this thing. And the blockchains are, uh, kind of more mature, more robust. You see a lot of uh, blockchain applications coming up this year. Um, so, and uh, data computing uh, is, is rapidly used and, uh, going forward. So, uh, looking at the cloud data lake, so this is, um, you, know, you already seen this picture, uh, a centralized repository where 
we, we push our data structure and structured uh, IoT devices, AI and ML uh, models or, or visualization uh, uh, platforms connecting to the centralized repository. And so, the, you know, that's what we have done, migrating all our data into cloud. And now we have a single source of uh, you know, data, the data lake or structured, unstructured, everything sitting there. So we have a rapid uh, connection, servicing, movement, delivery, everything happening at a rapid pace. So enterprise data management. Uh, this is what but this is what we had on-prem uh, as uh, when I started this enterprise data strategy seven years ago with this bank. Uh, we started off with uh, some key requirements where we wanted to aggregate all the data um, you know, on the on the network, different silo data into one central repository. Uh, so we use a core banking platform which gives us about uh, 85 to 90 percent of the data. So we bring all the data and also add all the additional data elements, whether other other businesses, we have uh, siloed data, bring everything together, aggregate that into a single source, and have a longer period of retention, at least seven years to for compliance and for regulatory reporting, uh, so we can grow even beyond further. Um, so that was the initial requirement. So we went through some um, you know, processes and systems in place about six years ago, Landed up in this in this uh, you know traditional look of uh, layers where you have a data a data acquisition you know your data coming through different systems through flat files or CSVs uh, every day and then you're processing you're extracting and loading and transforming and looking at data quality and MDM processes in the processing layer uh, and the data repository uh, we have uh, you know a big data cluster for unstructured sources you have data warehouse. And then you have um, a data consumption layer. You have uh, API services and analytics of our self-servicing analytics platform uh, sitting here on the data consumption layer. And we have data science pieces that are interacting with this data uh, to create some uh, data science applications. So, and again, we're service, serving them through um, self-servicing analytics platform. And we have a governance framework at every point. Um, you saw from source to delivery we have a governance framework um, we started to practice about two years ago, which is kind of maturing and as evolving as we, we are going forward, understanding how we can do a better adoption and better, better work on the governance framework. Uh, looking at the super, right from the sources, creating those dictionaries, creating those repositories, glossaries, catalogs, um, and policies, and then uh, encryption, looking at encryption, the data security, a PCI data encryption, data security, and how are we you know, managing our security while transporting the data, things like that. And then uh, then the, uh, the whole end of the whole cycle, uh, we want to understand who's who's getting the data, using the data, and what kind of uh, you know, data they're using, at the field level or column level, things like that, understand uh, they're authorized to use this data or not. So uh, we're trying to kind of get into that place. So the, this is what we evolved into a modern data management platform on the cloud. So now we have um, you know, data, data ingestion or data acquisition layer uh, coming from different sources. We have a lot of cloud applications, uh, our core banking platform being in the cloud. Uh, we also have our CR and Salesforce in the cloud. We have ServiceNow or other uh, cloud applications. Uh, but from on-prem, uh, we are you know, getting our, uh, what do you call other businesses, uh, mortgage, small business lending, all the other business applications from from our uh, network, and then we have other uh, inputs from you know third-party card transactions, things like that. Getting everything into a, a streaming services. Uh, that's one of the projects for uh, on the project for a mortgage where we want to understand what's going on uh, right at the time uh, to serve better uh, because now your our mortgage you know servicing has gone up just just like any other uh, financial institution. Everybody wants to refi or, uh, you know, kind of mortgage because of low interest rates. Um, so streaming services and pushing all the data into lake, um, you know, doing some data science, AI, ML, we're still maturing in that area on the data science, AI and AML capabilities for uh, you know, credit risk, uh, thing understanding of customer churn, things like applications, use cases we have so we could use them efficiently, pushing that to a, a data consumption layer 
a self-servicing analytics platform. We have another poll question coming up. fast. The question is, uh, what are the barriers for cloud adoption at your organization? Um, so it's a security concern, so lack of budget, legal or, or regula regulatory, lack of, lack of staff. So that's great. Now we have security concerns, of course, that was one of the, one of the main, main uh, issues we had. Uh, going to cloud, moving our data to cloud, even in a, uh, in a previous environment where there's a big concern about uh, data security in cloud. Uh, but but I'll, we'll talk about the security as we go forward. I'll, I'll talk the advantages when we go to cloud here. So well, well, going to the cloud, we had several advantages, uh, obviously. So, and we'll also talk about the security aspect this year. Uh, but, but the ones that are talking, like I, like I said, about cost savings. Uh, looking at what we have right now on on prem, moving to the cloud, we we saved up to seventy five percent of cost annual licensing costs. That's significant savings, uh, especially in this time where we are trying to you know look at our IT spread, look at our optimizing our costs. This is a huge deal. Uh, so the second top would I would perform is the performance. Now, whatever we had on the on prem systems compared to what we have on on prem systems. Uh, the performance is much more better uh, because what the process, for example, our ETL process, which is running, uh, you know, several hours on the, on the old, old traditional systems, now it takes about a fraction or 25% uh, of the time. So we see a significant improvement performance, whether we're loading data or we're serving data, that, that's awesome. The scalability is a, is a big feature where we can actually scale the data warehouse uh, as needed. We don't have to pay for uh, large computing unless we're using it for it. So we have different connections uh, based on, uh, we can also allocate different connectors to users or applications based on what type of uh, uh, configuration they need to do the job. So it can be dynamically scalable with no interruptions on the system. Uh, security wise, uh, actually uh, what I felt was the actually, the security is interesting that it's actually more secure uh, than our traditional on-prem on systems. So we have uh, we lock down the whole uh, network to our uh, our our um, internal uh, uh, network. So I cannot access this database outside the network. I have to be on the network to access the system, which means I'm already being verified through uh, my uh, Active Directory and also through my uh, token to make sure I, I join the network, and then I get the access to this database or or, or this um, so resource on the network on the cloud. And then I also can enable a multi-factor authentication at that point to make sure I'm, I'm authenticated again. Um, so there are several uh, levels of security that you can deploy to make sure the data is secure. Um, you understand also every, every query around this interesting database is all automatically saved in the, in, the, in the logs. So you can load all the logs into somewhere and just do an analysis about which users are running, what type of queries. And if you want to restrict you know, some users from using certain type of information that's possible with this model. Uh, sometimes if you, some users are trying to you know, get some sensitive information uh, repeatedly or out of, the, out of the normal process, you can quickly capture that as well. So encryption is a big deal, huge deal for our PCI regulation compliance. Uh, so and, uh, all the regulatory things we do at bank, the encryption is used thing for at rest and also doing transport, which is not possible with this cloud technologies. Earlier, we had a type of encryption at rest, but we have to apply uh, encryption um, on top of everything. That would take uh, a lot of processing time for serialization and deserialization and uh, encryption in the old old fashioned ways. But now, uh, these softwares come with automatic encryption at rest, encryption transport. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, like I talked about, this high availability, 99% of the time, the systems are up, there's no interruption. Uh, so that's, that's, that's awesome. So the backup, we talked about the backup and DR. 
where uh, we, we don't have any backups anymore. We have uh, we used to spend about six to seven hours every night to do a daily backup on the data warehouse. Now we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, we don't have to do a 36-hour backup during the weekend of uh, the whole weekly backup, uh, which would sometimes you know get into the process of loading and then it will interrupt the next process. So we saw that as a big feature uh, advantage, no backup at all. And the disaster recovery, of course, we don't have to uh, create a replication on the DR side for the same, uh, what do you call the data, and then make sure, uh, understand the failover, uh, understand test those requirement, test the DR testing all the time, because anytime a cloud providers, uh, they have multiple multiple zones and any zone fails, we have a, an immediate backup, and. Throughout the, throughout the globe, I guess, you know, you, because we are only operating in the U.S., we are only in the U.S. Uh, region too, uh, but we could be anywhere in the world and be able to access that with no interruptions. Uh, maintenance, what we saw, significant uh, advantages in maintenance, uh, where we have our upgrades is one big thing we talked about. And we also have less maintenance and fixing and rerunning those things, so we have less full-time hours spent on this maintenance, uh, maintaining these products. So we have less less resources, which, which can reduce our uh, contract costs or uh, full-time our costs uh, dealing with our traditional systems. So, and, uh, you know, migrating to the cloud, uh, this, is, uh, this is how we did it, and this is, uh, you know, best practices. Understanding your, uniting your diverse data sources, uh, so we had, uh, now we can do, uh, uh, with this uh, performance that's available in the cloud, we can do most of the non-recommended systems now are uh, ELT systems where you, you extract, load, and transform, and then, uh, you know, you, you load everything into one place, and you handle structured and semi-structured data, no problem to store or access as soon as you need it. Um, so, and then, uh, you know, you want to, this, this systems will help you to separate computing and storage. Uh, because they're uh, automatically configured to uh, isolate those uh, layers for you to scale them up in whichever direction you want to do. And, uh, you know, governance is a huge deal for us or any, any financial institution that we talked about. Um, so uh, as we move, the, move to the cloud, we have to understand the data lineage, how, how we're moving the data to the cloud, how we're transforming the data, uh, and understand the source and target, and also on, uh, add context to the metadata so we can quickly look into those uh, uh, glossary uh, terms, understand you know, the data quickly. And of course, you have to have a good practice of cleaning the data, creating the data, and uh, yeah, creating a good data governance prog program as you move to the cloud. Uh, so data quality, of course, is you know, that's a need for anybody. So we have a you know, good play, checks and balances in place before we load the data to uh, your, uh, we've talked, we heard about the, the previous, uh, previous uh, 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 meeting, we, we, we heard about the data quality, how they're doing it. Of course, we're also put, following the same practice, um, making, putting our rules engine in place, understanding what type of data needs to have, uh, you know, certain uh, requirements, if it's social security number, phone number, or a address, have the preliminary checks in place to make sure we have a data quality coming through, quality data coming through, and also, and we also have a script-based testing to make sure we have uh, quality data loaded into the systems. Uh, and then self-service is a huge uh, you know, deal in, in our uh, lean systems uh, environment nowadays uh, to make sure the business users are empowered with uh, the data and tools that they need to do the job. So that way, uh, IT is not spending a lot more time creating the systems for them to do their day-to-day -day job. Uh, so we are setting up the platform, we're setting up the business glossary, we're setting up the business terms, we are uh, you know, setting up the environments and all with the little or no, you know, very, very little ease, they can produce the data, they, they produce whatever things they need to do, the, to do their day-to-day -day job. So the data migration plan, uh, this is what you experienced, this is what I want to share. Uh, this is uh, from Gartner. Um, so the, the success factors for data migration. Um, so you're, you're planning and prepare, preparing, we took us forever. Uh, to actually go uh, move all the data to the cloud uh, because it's not easy to uh, back up a file and you know, recover everything into the cloud. It just takes enormous amount of time. Sometimes your target, the new cloud systems are not compatible with the traditional type of, uh, you know, type of fields. Um, so there, there are some, some things you have to change, make sure the new clouds actually have 
a better way of uh, defining those types. So you want to make sure those types are converted into those targets. Um, you know, best way to what we did was to just go go table by table and uh, read them through an ATL process and load it into a target table. Uh, and just everything we have on the base layer, and then as we progress, we started you know, adding those differentials as we move along to catch it. So uh, loading the base is one stage, and passing the differentials is another stage, and then uh, you know kind of parallelly running both the systems to make sure we are in sync. Um, so that was a, that was a you know a tedious process for a few months, uh, but that's the best way to do it. Uh, so we are planning and preparing. A uh, formal data work stream, uh, strategic phasing, like I talked about, just phase um, your approach. And then, uh, you know, team structure and skills, of course, you need uh, the skills and uh, things in place. Uh, I can I can share that, but by now going to cloud, we have actually, uh, we we have, we need now less people on the team to just do the support the system as opposed to uh, traditional systems where we needed uh, more skilled people to do uh, your administration work, your troubleshooting work, your uh, all these other things that you need in a daily maintenance. Um, so we have um, self-maintained databases where we don't need a lot of administration, but uh, very, you know, little of, no, no very easy, little easy. You can just maintain the systems. Uh, so execution, uh, of course, is the right mix of tools. Uh, not only the data data layer, but also things that play well along with this ecosystem, whether it's ETL process or your analytics layer. Your, your consumption layer. Um, so you want to create the performance across the whole ecosystem just to achieve the total performance through the end-to-end -end systems. Um, so you just want to see, understand the bottlenecks, uh, you know, the, two, the performance bottlenecks to make sure you have the right mix of tools. Um, of course, use of metadata um, uh, that uh, we have used, uh, you know, testing, of course, uh, make sure all the data is, uh, you know, tested, make sure everything is in place. Uh, I have a, we have test scripts every day to make sure all the data is loaded and it's in sync. We did not miss anything from the server systems and we did not uh, have any bad data in, in the loaded systems. So governance, of course, uh, governance is a huge, huge thing we talked about. Um, data quality and formalizing the governance and goals and processes, establishing the metrics. Um, so that's a huge process. Um, so um, I guess we're coming to the last slide now. So uh, the the what do you, uh, cloud migration has been uh, phenomenally useful for us uh, as a bank uh, to, to help maintain manage your systems, especially in this in this town where, uh, for example, if somebody is sick in our in our, in our team, uh, as it is, we're operating low you know, on our team, and if you cannot afford to have somebody downtime of 14, 21 days not being available, uh, you know some leave systems have don't have backup for all these resources. So anything happens like that, we are we're in a position to support our systems going forward, maintain day-to-day -day operations, be able to adapt to new environments, to adapt to new challenges that are coming along, make sure we're, we're moving forward to support our business in this any, any, any situation, any given situation. Um, so that's all I wanted to share. My, my time is coming up. Now uh, we'll have a Q&A session. Thank you very much for that, Sol. Um, unfortunately, we are at time at the end of the session. I know we had those technical issues um, that, that obviously delayed the, the presentation there. And it does mean, unfortunately, we've run out of time for questions. I do apologize for that. Uh, and I do apologize for the technical issues um, that you were experiencing as well, uh, both to you, Sol, and, and to the audience. What I would suggest is if you do have questions for Sol, um, please do reach out to him. As you can see, he's kindly put his LinkedIn uh, handle on the on the screen at the moment. Um, so please do reach out to him, connect with him, and I'm sure he'll be more than happy um, to answer the questions that you had that unfortunately we have just run out of time there. I do apologize once again for that. Um, thank you, Sol, for, for that presentation. It was really, really interesting, and I didn't want to try and cut you short um, to get those questions in because it was so full of useful information. Um, so I'm sure that our attendees will have found that useful. Uh, we are well, out of time, you. as I say. Go ahead. Thanks, Sol. As I say, we are out of time for today, but thank you again to the audience for joining us, and we look forward to welcoming you back tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern uh, for the final session of DCOFS, and that is going to be delivered by Dan Powers, um, who's the MD for Data Governance uh, at State Street. Uh, we will, he will also be looking um, at some themes to do with coronavirus. This time, he will be looking um, 
at how you can use data to inform crisis response, not just in your business life, um, but he's also going to be talking um, from personal experience for some nonprofit experience as well. Um, so from, from one cloud-based uh, coronavirus theme to another one uh, looking at crisis response tomorrow. I do hope you can join us tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time for that. For now, I'll say thanks again. Good afternoon, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Goodbye.